Two and a half months in the hospital were dreadful. I will not make up stories just to inspire you. I was at the verge of despair. One day, doctor came to me and he said, well, I heard that you wanted to be an artist, but you ended up being a housewife. I have a bad news for you. You won't be able to paint again because your wrist and your arm are so deformed, you won't be able to hold a pen again. And I stayed quiet. Next day, doctor came to me and said, your spine injury is so bad, you won't be able to walk again. I took a deep breath and I said, it's all right. The very next day, doctor came to me and said, because of your spine injury and the fixation that you have in your back, you won't be able to give birth to a child again. That day, I was devastated. I still remember, I asked my mother, why me? And that is where I started to question my existence. The, why am I even alive? What's the point of living? I cannot walk, I cannot paint, fine. I cannot be a mother. And we have this thing in our heads being women that we are incomplete without having children. I am going to be an incomplete woman for the rest of my life. What's the point? People are scared. They think that I will get divorced. What is going to happen to me? Why me? Why am I alive? We all try to chase this tunnel. We all do this because we see light in the end of the tunnel, which keeps us going. My dear friends, in my situation, there was a tunnel that I had to roll on, but there was no light. And that is where I realized that the words have the power to heal the soul. My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what it is, but he surely has. And in all that distress and grief, somehow or the other, those words were so magical that they kept me going. I was trying to put that smile on my face all the time, was hiding. It was so hard to hide the pain, which was there. But all I knew was that if I will give up, my mother and my brothers will give up too. I cannot see them crying with me. So what kept me going was, one day I asked my brothers, I know I have a deformed hand, but I'm tired of looking at these white walls in the hospital and wearing these white scrubs. I'm getting tired of this. I want to add more colors to my life. I want to do something. Bring me some colors. Bring me some small canvas. I want to paint. So the very first painting I made was on my deathbed, where I painted for the very first time. It was not just an art piece or just my passion. It was my therapy. What an amazing therapy it was. Without uttering a single word, I could paint my heart out. I could share my story. People used to come and say, what lovely painting. So much color. Nobody could see the grief in it. Only I could. So that's how I spent two and a half months in my hospital, crying, never complaining or whining, but painting. And then I was discharged and I went back home. And I went back home and I realized that I have developed a lot of pressure ulcers on my back and on my hip bone. I was unable to sit. There were a lot of infections in my body, a lot of allergies. So doctors wanted me to lie down on the bed straight for not six months, for not one year, for two years. I was bedridden, confined in that one room, looking outside the window, listening to the birds chirping, and thinking maybe there will be a time when we'll be going out with the family and enjoying the nature. That was the time where I realized how lucky people are, but they don't realize.